G'day everyone, it's Andrew from Aussie Builds here. In this edition of Aussie Builds, I want to cover off on something that we've been waiting so long for since it was announced, and it's the all new B6.1 by Team Associated. This car was announced about two months ago. There was a little bit of a preview at it at the uh, China Worlds, which I was fortunate enough to see firsthand. Uh, finally, the cars hit production lines. Team Associated factory drivers got them about two to three weeks ago, uh, besides the, uh, the, the top level guys like your Ryans and your Spencers. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to be able to have a development and drive day with factory driver Ray Monday. Uh, and we went through the car and went over a few setup things specifically for outdoor off-road dirt. You have seen a lot of our tracks here. If you want to see more of them, head to Aussie Builds or head to Ask Ray Monday. Uh, we've got some really good videos up there. Uh, what I'm going to do is take you through a complete start to finish build of the all new B6.1D and I'm going to put on the car the findings that we've had over the last few weeks to get this car working for outdoor dirt clay conditions. So come with me on this video guys, I'm going to show you step by step, I'm going to do some different hyperlapse stuff. Uh, yeah, stick with me on this one and uh, this is Andrew from Aussie Builds showing you a complete build of the B6.1D. So one of the first things I do with any kit build is I'll use some autosol metal polish and a Dremel. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply some of this to a microfiber cloth and we're going to polish our ball studs and our hinge pins. What this will do in short will ensure that the braking time for the car is a lot lower um, and you get a nice free smooth chassis. Uh, it helps smooth things out and uh, gives everything a nice clean look. Uh, so we'll just put that in the Dremel there and we'll put a light, light, pressure amount on the uh, microfiber cloth and the Dremel on a medium speed and just kind of lightly rub that across and then clean off the ball stud. Uh, what you'll notice is the ball stud will go from a matte finish to a nice shiny polished finish and you also notice when you put the uh, put the tie rods on that they'll be nice and nice and free and smooth. Um, and you'll go ahead and do this for every ball stud on the car and we'll do the same process for the hinge pins but the difference with the hinge pins is obviously they don't have a thread so what we're going to do is we'll do the first two thirds of the hinge pin clean it off and then rotate that uh, and do the other side and you'll notice that your arms will be nice and free on your car so one of the things I like to do before building a ball diff is I'll actually get all the parts out and I'll use some paper towel with some simple green and I'll actually clean off all of the metal parts so the the diff rings, the thrust rings, uh, the screws, the out drives and this just helps clean them off and get any contaminants off them so I'll just use a little bit of simple green and clean that off and put that on another clean paper towel for all those components uh, even the bearings I'll wipe a little bit of excess grease off them if they've got any the next part is the outdrives. They're actually made of steel and they come with an anti-rust agent on them so these ones definitely need cleaning. So what I do is I use some more simple green and I'll wipe them off with the paper towel and you'll actually see on the paper towel the, the brown release agent come off of them and if you build the diff with this like that um, you'll notice that you'll get some contaminants and the diff just won't last as long so I like to get all of that off um, and then I'll also do that for the inside of the diff cups as well um, especially the side that you're going to put the thrust on um, so I do that and make sure the diff's nice and clean before we start building Another thing to do before you start building the diff is just to compress the uh, the thrust spring. Uh, what this will do is it'll uh, stop the diff from loosening off as much in its first few runs. It just compresses that and um, gets that spring um, nice and compressed. What I'll do as well is when using the stealth diff lube, depending on how long it's actually been sitting in the warehouse for, I'll mix together the, the stealth disc grease by squeezing the tube and then I'll squeeze a little bit out just to, to waste a little bit um, just to ensure that I've got some nice good grease there. Uh, what I'll do is I'll fill all of, the, uh, all of the 14 holes on the main gear just with a little bit of stealth diff lube um, and I'll just get a little bit out just about half a mil, uh, one mil worth and just go all the way through and put that in every hole there um, just to make sure that there's enough grease in that diff. The next thing that I'll do is I'll actually put a little bit of stealth diff lube um, and I'll put that on the outdrive itself. I've seen quite a lot of people put a lot there but you don't need to put a lot and I'll just use that to hold the, the diff plates in place. And so I'll do that on both sides just to ensure that when we're building the diff they stay nice and secure. 
and we'll just put the bearings in place as well. The next part will actually build uh, the, the actual diff itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of stealth diff lube and we're going to put that in on the uh, on the tip of the the tube there and actually use that to to pick up the balls off the paper towel just so we're not using our fingers or anything like that so I actually do that for all of the balls so I actually don't touch them at all um, and then I'll go ahead and uh, and do the exact same process for the thrust race so what we're going to do is we're going to use that same process for the thrust race so we'll mix up some black grease and then we'll uh, get the thrust race plate and put that on the thrust screw and we'll use a small amount of black grease on that plate itself so that's another trick that I've found is not actually using a lot of diff grease um, what happens is if you use too much when you tighten it down all the grease just goes everywhere and you lose it out of your diff and it gets um, dirty so the ex more grease you use the more dust it will attract and your diff will go bad so I'll just put a little bit on that plate there and then I'll actually same process I won't touch the balls but I'll use the I'll use the grease just to pick up the balls onto that plate and then I'll usually put just a small amount on the top before installing the top plate um, so just a small ring around and then I'll install that plate and then that thrust is good to go what we'll do now is we'll actually put a little bit of diff lube on the, the main plates themselves and another thing that I've seen a lot of people do is again use too much diff lube and they'll put quite a large amount on. I only put a small amount on and then what I'll do is I'll actually spread that with a clean finger so I'll just nice and dab that around there and wiping off any excess so it just needs to be a nice thin film. Again if you use too much when you tighten the diff down it'll just come out the outdrives, the sides of the outdrives and remember we've already put some lube in the main gear itself. So what we'll do is we'll assemble that gear together there um, just making sure that the, the main gear beds into that bearing nice and easy um, and then we'll get our thrust screw and install that in the outdrive before putting the diff together. Install the spring and uh, then what we'll do is we'll tighten that down. Um, what I like to do is when tightening the diff down is I'll go down to about one millimeter gap before the actual uh, the the nut bottoms out and then I'll just slowly slowly tighten that off and then every now and then I'll give it a twist um, till we're almost at an eighth of a turn um, before bottoming out that screw you've got to be careful not to tighten it too much because uh, what you'll do is you'll flat spot those balls if you over tighten so the B6.1 comes with an all new transmission. The B6.1D comes with a layback transmission. What we're actually going to install this for an outdoor edition of this car is a stand up three gear transmission. Now this is optional from Team Associated and I highly recommend it for anyone racing outdoor off-road clay or slippery conditions. Uh, one of the main things that is different about this diff uh, compared to the layback is you can't use the inserts that come with the layback transmission to change the diff height. The diff height is set, so what you need to do is just install the bearings as you normally would, um, and that will sit there in the transmission case. So that is one of the downsides of the stand-up transmission, but for outdoor conditions, we've found that this gives the best grip, the best weight transfer um, and is generally the nicest feel. The layback is good and the lay down is good but for bumpy or slippery conditions it just doesn't give that ultimate speed that you need out of the car and this makes it just a bit more comfortable to drive. Uh, the one thing you will need with the stand up transmission is a stand up top shaft as well. Um, it is completely different to the to the layback top shaft so uh, to tell the difference this one is coated in black so we'll just go ahead and install that there. One of the things I really like about this transmission is it's a um, it's a top mount or top mount case. So basically, the the case splits in two halves, and you have four screws to access it from the top. So you don't need to pull the entire diff out, uh, the transmission out, and then separate the case in in half down the middle. It actually just the top comes off with four screws. Uh, it's really really nice, and I'm super happy with what Team Associated have done here. Um, that means maintenance and diff rebuilds are going to be nice and quick. One thing to note is the fit and finish of the transmission and the plastic they've used is quite nice. Now one of the things that uh, I do want to call out is the, the ball stud mount. It is a different ball stud mount compared to the B6 and it is actually 2mm lower than the B6. Um, 
so you will need to uh, compensate with slightly more washes to what you would run on your standard B6 setup. So I'm actually, I usually run one millimeter of washer on the B6, so I'm going to run three millimeters on the B6.1D. And I'll just use a little bit of thread lock there just to ensure that those balls stay in place. Uh, it, it does go together really nice and it does use a screw and then is captured on the top so the the whole housing goes together really really cleanly i use a little bit of stealth diff lube just on the on the main uh, diff gear itself just to stop any binding or anything like that and i just uh, i've always done that and I, I think it's just nice keeps it nice and smooth um, and then again you just need four screws on the top and then the transmissions together Now the really really interesting thing that they've done with this uh, all new transmission is they've also changed how the uh, spur gear and the slipper assembly goes on. The spur gears are all new, the slipper pads are all new uh, and you actually need to use uh, this long slipper uh, kind of screw or bolt so to speak uh, and it uses a, a captured pin design to, to hold the, the slipper um, uh, plate in place. Uh, I think it's actually really, really interesting design. I like the adjustment in it. Um, I think it's a lot easier to set your slipper um, and it just feels a lot more consistent. Um, so you just need to use a pair of pliers to, to install that pin. It's quite hard to get that in there. We'll go ahead and put that all together and uh, you'll actually notice with the spur gear, it's got a, a recess in it um, for the pad to sit in, which is quite nice. This also is to use the um, a, a three three plate slipper as well so you can use a two or a three plate slipper I'm using the two plate um, I just find it it's nice for me um, what we'll do is we'll go and that's the entire slip assembly put together and then what that does is that just slides into the uh, the, the top shaft and then we'll come out the other side of the top shaft um, so you just put that in there it is a little bit uh, tricky to get that in there the first shot um, but you just have to persist with it sometimes it will drop the pad you just have to get uh, used to this type of design um, and then again uh, they have changed the the slipper spring it is a smaller diameter spring and it's a smaller diameter nut um, and it's a you can actually set this by hand um, I really really like this design it's it's nice easy to use it's clean One of the things that the uh, stand-up transmission does come with is this spacer. And it's a spacer for the tower. And all that is for is if you want to run your shocks on the front of the rear arm or the rear of the rear arm. If you want to run your shocks on the rear of the rear arm, like how I'm doing, uh, you need to install this spacer. And then you would need to face your uh, shock standoffs rearward. If you want to run them on the front, you take the spacer out and reverse where your standoffs are and face them forward, obviously. One of the interesting things, you can use a, uh, the, um, a rear wheel nut um, tightener or a, a, a spanner to, to tighten off the, uh, the standoffs. It's the exact same size, so I believe it's a 7mm. Um, so you can use that there, it's nice and easy. The last thing that we're going to do is install the wing standoffs. Now the, the, the wing mounts, uh, again, they come with a spacer as well. This space is just purely for adjustment. So if you run, run a, want to run your wing further rearward or further forward, um, so you can install those there. You will need to use a slightly longer screw. Um, in this case, I'm going to run my wing uh, more forward as I'm running a, a rear shock setup um, to have the wing hanging further off the, the rear end of the car over large jumps and especially if it's windy you will get a little bit of a, a parachuting effect.